Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. I'm a huge fan of discovering different builds for classes, be they underdog classes or certain class covering combinations that are not conventional, maybe using legendaries that no one thought would work. However, certain builds take it way too far, where you use toys outside of your class kit in order to break your class in such a way that under the right conditions turn your class into a one button spec. This is obviously a bug and will be fixed in the future, but if you want to try it right now, this is how you turn your Frost Death Knight into a one button class. I was wondering for a bit, why were there so many Kyrian Frost Death Knights all of a sudden doing some of the high end keys? And the Kyrian Legendary is required for this build, but thanks to Biceps Pump for making the video showcasing how all of this is done. Check out his original video and check out his channel, and there's a good chance you've seen some of his PvE Frost DK and Holy DK guides before. But right before we see the one button DK, most of you guys watching this videos are not subscribed. And the more of you I ask, the more of you do subscribe, so let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell if you're watching this videos anyway. Especially if you want to see more class builds in the future, about some underdog builds and real stuff instead of this wacky mess. As well as 9.2 updates in future videos. So for this build, we'll be playing as a Kyrian Frost Death Knight, using the Kyrian ability Shackle the Unworthy. It is a damage over time ability that does arcane damage over time. By using abilities that cost ruins against the target affected by Shackle, Shackle will also spread to nearby enemy targets. Under the normal conditions, Shackle cannot refresh upon itself. It can only jump to nearby enemies, so we're going to break the game so you can refresh on itself. Head to the portal room in Orgrimmar or Stormwind and take the portal to Asuna, one of the four starting leveling zones of Legion. There you'll find a vendor for Court of Ferrange's Emissary. The Emissary sells a lot of items, one of them being a toy called Enchanted Stone Whistle. You will need to have enough reputation with the Court of Ferrandres in order to be able to purchase the toy. The toy whistle summons a bird that's been turned to stone. That's it. It's not really super remarkable, but the interaction with Enshackle is interesting. Normally, when you hit the enemy with Shackle and you hit him with Obliterate, Shackle does nothing. It just ticks out like a dot. But when you hit the enemy that has Shackle next to the toy, it reapplies a new instance of that dot. This new instance lasts slightly longer than the last one and has other benefits with the reapplication having to do with legendaries and talents. With the legendary for the Carrion final sentence, Shackle the Unworthy, when it spreads to a nearby enemy, you gain a rune and your damage is increased by 3% up to 15 maximum. This gets you the benefits of runic power generation and the benefits of what normally would be an AoE legendary that just now works in single target. With a lot of obliterates, you'll get a lot of runic power. Breath of Sendragosa eats away at runic power very quickly. As you spend runic power, you have a chance to refresh a rune. This combined together with the legendary rune refresh effect basically can get you in a situation where you're constantly pressing obliterate and getting two runes for free, sinking them back into obliterates and getting two runes again, which gives you an endless flow of obliterates. With so much rune spending, playing the talent of Gathering Storm will increase the duration and damage of your remorseless winter very rapidly, which is even more damage on top of all the damage you're doing already. It's up to you whether you want to do this or not, but if you play a two-hand Death Knight, you do get extra damage on Obliterates, which you are constantly spamming if you end up taking the passive for Might of the Frozen Waste as a two-hand combo. Together with the Pelagos Soulbind, every time Shackle the Unworthy is refreshed, Combat Meditation provides you mastery for 10 seconds. This is a permanent mastery buff as long as the dot is on the target. So let's do a bit of a review. You get unlimited frost damage with breath that almost never runs out because you can spam obliterate, legendary that constantly gives you resources so you can spam more obliterate, remorseless winter buff by those obliterate damage, mastery buff from Pelagos to give you all frost damage increases, a legendary that provides 15% damage buff even though it's not supposed to on single target. And you get carpal tunnel from spam and obliterate. I think it's a pretty good deal. So obviously I wanted to try this play style inside of a raid and in dungeon. I have no idea why they let me bring in my undergear death knight who doesn't have any domination gear for the raid but there i was with another death knight in the guild that's also trying out the same build obviously you want to do this on fights where the boss isn't constantly being moved you want to do this on fights where the boss is mostly stationary or at least account for the mechanics where the boss is going to be moving and try to execute most of your burst when the boss is standing still this playstyle struggles with movement, but so does the class that we play, so I guess it kind of fits. 
For a lot of the rage fights, this does seem like a, while very cheesy, technically a usable method. There's a lot of different fights where bosses are going to be standing still for extended amounts of time. So technically it does fit in that environment. Although we did find out that when you have two death knights, both using the toy and both using this bug in order to get some cheese damage, that the bug stops working half the time. I think this is because there's two death knights using this build and therefore using two toys. So then the game bugs out when it tries to recreate this bug. But we can't really complain since we were bugging the game in the first place. So it does break with multiple death knights, it seems. In Mythic Keys, I found that this is actually decent damage. Breath of Sindragosa does exceptionally good damage in AoE dungeons. Pull a bunch of enemies on that two minute cooldown and then breathe them all down. Together with the Remorse of Swincher, which is just extra more solid single target damage, but also with natural cleave on top of it. And while you're breathing and you have Remorse of Swincher spinning, you can just find the focus target in the group or maybe the boss and start slamming him down with Obliterate, which grades for awesome focus damage. However, this week is the worst week to do this because one, Sanguine is an affix. When enemies fall, they drop a pull of Sanguine, which will heal nearby enemies and will damage us. So we're constantly having to move the mobs around. And as I mentioned earlier, without the toy near them, I'm losing out on this full effect. Also, it's Necrotic Week, and the more hits the tank takes, the more the Necrotic spilled up. Eventually, the tank is going to have to kite, which means the mobs are getting moved constantly, so I can never get any value on the toy. And my tank is a demon hunter, so part of his defensive playstyle is to run in, get aggro, and kite anyway, so I almost never get any uptime with this playstyle. But when you finally hit that calm moment when it's just the boss and the tank isn't moving everybody from side to side, you can get into that zen moment of you just spam and obliterate, and that's the only button you ever need to hit. A couple of weeks ago, I was looking at some of the locks for Death Knights. I was super excited for Shadowlands to be able to play two-hand playstyle for dungeons and raids, but turns out the dual wield is better for PvE, while the two-hand is better in PvP. Still, I didn't want to give up on my dream. I wanted to find a build that works. So when I saw some logs of Kirin Death Knights running two-hand weapons with the Kirin Legendary, at first I got excited. The likely explanation for that playstyle would have been they probably are a Blood Death Knight main or an Unholy Death Knight main and they just wanted some keys as Frost. That's where they used the two-hander, not because there was like some kind of a cheat code that they figured out that made the two-hand playstyle obliterate spam build good. When I said cheat code, I thought maybe like a trick or a playstyle, maybe like some secondary stats that they've adjusted to facilitate the build to work. I didn't mean literally cheat code that lets them break the class with a toy. But anyway, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. What do you think about this bug? What do you think about this build? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Blizzard should fix this? And I think the answer is obviously yes. Imagine if you needed a toy just to make any class that you play functional or viable. It's very silly and very fun, but definitely not intended. Hopefully we'll see some balance tuning for some of the Covenants, as well as Covenant Legendaries go into patch 9.2, because this version of a Covenant Legendary definitely feels pretty good to play, so I wonder if they maybe can borrow some of the ideas from this bug in order to make it better for a single target. Thank you all so much for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, I'll see all of you in another video.